Hello Poke Moshpit, this is Necroskivo and you're watching one of my narrated Wi-Fi battles. I hope you all do enjoy it. This is my first upload to the Poke Moshpit beta, and I, while I've been playing for quite a while, I only started a channel very recently. So let's get started. This is a battle I found on the Game FAQ forums against Smoothie. Uh, great opponent, we had a great match. I start off with my Ninetales, this is my Sun team obviously, and I'm running a mix of OU and RU Pokemon that I really enjoy using. He has more of a standard team, which is, he actually has some interesting Pokemon as well. He starts off with Fortress. I went for the Toxic, expecting him to switch into Arcanine that I saw on the team preview. Because uh, he, obviously a Fortress wouldn't want to take a fire attack, even though it has Sturdy. Uh, but he just sets up Stealth Rock, so knowing that he might keep setting up entry hazards like Spikes and Toxic Spikes, I go right for the Flamethrower on the second one. Uh, and that works out, because even though he has Aqua Berry, um, it's a clean 2 AKO, so uh, that works out. He gets up one layer of spikes. Not that big a deal is what I thought at the time. I could just spin him away with my Hitmon top later on, and I do knock him out with a flamethrower. So an early 5 6 lead. He has entry hazards. I don't have entry hazards. We're going to keep rolling on. No pun intended. So his next Pokemon is Sam Fisher, the Tentacruel, and he brings this out. I wasn't really sure what to expect of it. Since he started setting up with the first one, I figured maybe Toxic Spikes. So I went out to Cresselia to start setting up dual screens. This is a light clay, max defense, max HP Cresselia. Uh, and it took quite a while to get because I completely breed and EV train all my Pokemon. So I had to trade a lot of the GTS until I got one with a decent nature. Um, but here he just goes for sludge bombs and seeing how much that does, I'm actually thinking that that might be specs. Uh, so I set up the light screen knowing that I could take one more with the light screen up. Crest has great natural um, defense and special defense, great HP as well, so I figured I could take it. I do. I set up the Moonlight. He probably stayed in and went for the other one, hoping that he could take me out. Uh, but since I have the Sunny Day up, that's that's going to heal a lot of my HP, which is fantastic. In Japan, the Sunny Day is actually called Clear Skies, which is why Moonlight heals HP as well, because it's not really a Sunny Day, it's just that the skies are clear. So there's a little poke effect for you. He brings out his Arcanine, and I set up a Reflect on this turn that he brings it in, because I was expecting him to switch out to something more physical, although I didn't know what, per se. Uh, I saw on the team preview that he had a Dust and Wire, I was, I was actually expecting that to come in right there. But I went for the Toxic on the Arcanine, knowing that Intimidate normally means that it's bulky. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see Leftovers or anything, but he brings out Dust and Wire as I go for the Toxic, which that's great. I don't mind getting Dust and Wire Toxic, because it has pretty nice bulk on the defense and special defensive sides while sporting a decent attack stat. So getting something like that toxic is nice. I think it's only natural recovery is pain split, so I'm okay with that. I switch back out to Kathy, expecting some sort of status. I was expecting toxic, because um, that's really good to get onto Cresselia. It hurts its stalling potential. But he goes for the Will-O-Wisp. Uh, doesn't do anything. Uh, nice switch there, but I, if I had seen the Will-O-Wisp coming, I probably would have gone into Houndoom and gotten the Flash Fire Beast. But, uh, here I figure I can just go for a Sun Boosted Flamethrower, um, do a decent amount of damage to him, kind of see what type of uh, defensive set that this is, and based on how much that is, he is especially defensively bulky. Because I was a Flamethrower, Stab Man Boosted in the Sun, and it barely did a quarter. He goes for the Disable, which means I'm left to only go for the Energy Ball, my other two moves are Toxic and Will-O-Wisp, on this Max HP, Max Speed, Ninetales. Um, so I go for the energy ball just to get some damage on. I was actually expecting him to switch uh, to something, knowing that I only had one other, two other moves left that weren't useful. But he goes for his pain split. Since I was already missing some HP from the stealth rocks, that didn't hurt me too badly. Uh, he does get some HP back, but then the toxic damage just takes it all back away. So kind of a meat turn there, in my opinion. But he does make an interesting play right here, expecting the energy ball, and he goes back on into Tentacruel. Um, and this kind of uh, sealed my suspensions that it was a Specs Tentacruel because he goes for the Specs Sludge Bomb after my light screen wears off. And this, again, is a max HP Ninetales. And that takes me out. And that's not even a crit or anything. So right there is when I knew that it was Specs. Uh, and so knowing that, I know that I can go back out into Cresselia and do the same thing as before. Stall out the amount of damage that it's doing and just set up my screens. So here he once again goes for the sludge bomb. He may have been hoping for the crit or he may have just been capitalizing on the fact that uh, my screen wasn't up anymore. But that min-max damage right there wasn't even close to taking me out. Um, and I just set up a light screen again. 
here he I think he predicted me to go for the moonlight uh, and he just goes right back out into his Arcanine and I go for the moonlight just because in case he does start attacking with something more physical I don't have the screen up I need to be at full HP um, and that works out because where the HP that I'm at right now I get back up to full so that works fantastically um, it, as it turns out this Arcanine is actually a choice banded or uh, I'm sorry choice scarfed as it outspeeds something later on but I didn't know that at this point because it basically was only being used against things that would naturally be slower than it so he goes for the flare blitz right there and I I think I also didn't realize it was choice scarf because of the amount of damage that that did I may have thought uh, I think I thought that it was banded at the time to be honest but I also forgot about the Sun because as a flare blitz boosted in the Sun it's gonna do about the same it's gonna do the same amount as a choice banded one um, none of the Sun so with them toxic he's gonna be taking great uh, recoil damage and nice steady um, damage there from both the toxic and the uh, flare blitz recoil and I bring in naughty dog the hound doom to get the flash fire boost that works out nicely because this right here showed me that he was choice into it although I still didn't know that it was banded or scarfed but I figured he might actually go out into something new so I went for the dark gem boosted dark pulse um, here he just fodders his dust no wire which uh, kinda was a waste of my dark gem but it works out alright I guess he was expecting maybe um, a f I don't know what he was expecting actually a fire attack he could have just stayed in oh well I'm able to take out the dust no wire um, uh, the other moves on this Houndoom are Nasty Pot, Solar Beam, and uh, Flamethrower. That's pretty good coverage. Um, normally, when I run outside of the sun, I just give it a Power Herb as well, so I don't have to have the turn of speed up charging up to get the Solar Beam to work. So he goes out into Terrakion, and he makes a good prediction as I switch out into Cresselia, and he goes for the X Scissor, which I actually had not seen on very many Terrakion, but it makes sense with all the bulky grass types running around. That would have done well on Houndoom, and it would have done well on Cresselia. In fact, it did do well on Cresselia. Gets a useless crit, knocks me out. Crest did a good job supporting the team this match. Here I go on to Colonel Twist. Now that his Dustin Wire is gone, I can spin away those entry hazards. So, I go for the fake out just to get some free damage and to see if he's going to switch or anything like that. Because uh, I know he doesn't have any more Ghost Pokemon or anything to um, dodge the Rapid Spin or the fake out. And I hit the Tentacruel, which is nice. I get a nice, decent chunk in there. Tentacruel's regular defense is pretty decent, but not as high. And he goes for the Sludge Bomb as I'm about to Rapid Spin. And what do you know? He gets a crit through the light screen and just plows through him on top's great natural defenses there. Um, had I not gotten knocked out, I would have gone for the Rapid Spin, which would have protected my Pokemon from taking more damage, and it would have kept the Focus Sash intact on my Jump Bluff. But trying to salvage this right here, I go on into Taguro the Rhyperior, and uh, I go for the Rock Polish because I knew he would probably be expecting the Earthquake. And that works out as he goes into Togekiss, I get my Rock Polish up, and uh, my moves are Stone Edge, Megahorn, and Earthquake with the Life Orb. So pretty good coverage, I'm able to hit everything that's left on this team. Um, this appears to be a Hustle uh, Togekiss with the Life Orb as he went for the Extreme Speed there. Did a pretty decent chunk, despite me resisting it. Um, but I do just go straight for the Stone Edge and I am able to knock it out. And that damage that he went for right there uh, actually comes back into play in a few turns here. It was pretty smart for him to go ahead and get in the damage that he could even though it was resisted. So the Togekiss goes down, I lose a little bit of Life Orb Recoil, sitting comfortably at half of my HP. He sends back out, back out the Arcanine and here is where I confirm that it is Choice Scarfed. Because the Intimidate goes off, lowering my attack obviously. Still have pretty decent attack even though it's been cut, and he goes for the close combat out, speeding my Rhyperior. Had he not been Scarf, I would have easily taken him out, but even though he goes for the super effective move, Solid Rock saves me right there. Left with 43 HP, which is enough to take out the Arcanine with the Earthquake, um, especially due to the, if, even if he had barely lived, Toxic probably would have killed him. Um, and then after that, it allows me to force him into whatever Pokemon he's switching into. He goes back out into Terrakion here, and he only has one move for this situation, and that move is a priority move called Quick Attack. So even though I resist it, and uh, Rhyperior is such a beast, 6 HP is not that hard to take care of. So I do get knocked out there, and that's where that Hustle boosted, and the Entry Hazards that I failed to spin away earlier came into play. Here's where the failed Rapid Spin also comes into play as my Focus Sash breaks. Now I expected him to switch to Tentacool to take the Sleep Powder. 
because um, that's what I had to do to win. But I don't think he realized that my Houndoom had Solar Beam. I don't think most Houndooms carry Solar Beam. Um, so I plan to put the Tentacool to sleep, switch out to my Houndoom, and then as he switched back into Teraki, I'm probably expecting the Dark move, because um, I obviously wouldn't go for the Fire move. I would hit him with the Solar Beam and knock him out, and then I could. And then his last Pokemon remaining would be the Tentacruel, who, having his sleep turns reset, would have to sleep one more turn. So I come back out with my Naughty Dog, take the Entry Hazards, he is fast asleep as I switch in, and he swaps out, just like I planned. He brings back out the Terrakion, and I click Solar Beam, and at this point I'm celebrating. Fist pumps in the air, excitement coursing through my veins. You know, at this point, you think Solar Beam coming from Houndoom, that's gonna wipe out pretty much anything. But he lives. He lives somehow, min max damage modifier. Just unfortunate. But he lives with 6 HP, which is really, really unfortunate. Had I chosen maybe any other item, you know, wise glasses even, expert belt, I would have knocked him out. But I went with Dark Gym just because I wanted to test it out for this battle. Um, and he takes me out with a quick attack. So I go back out on the Stay Puff. This Stay Puff, uh, Jump Puff. Hey, that should be a Marshmallow Band. Stay Puff, Jump Puff. Anyways, it has max HP and max speed, so I am able to take the quick attack that he throws at me there. And I knock him out with a U-turn, which is payback for knocking out, um, how do you many? When you should be, that Terrakion should have been dead. Um, and all he has left is a Sleeping Tentacruel. Unfortunately, my only other moves are Encore, U-turn, Sleep Powder, and Leech Seed, which means if I use Leech Seed, I'm going to die from the Liquid Ooze that he might have. He could have Clear Body, Doubtful, um, so I was afraid to go for it, but I figured he'd wake up anyway, so he does eventually wake up and take me out, unfortunately. But thank you for watching today's battle. If you enjoyed the battle, please like. Uh, please check out my channel for more battles. Again, I completely breed and EV train everything completely legitimately, uh, just because I enjoy that aspect of the battle, not to talk down to anyone who you know, Pokesaz or Pokegems. But, uh, thank you Mosh Pit, for uploading this on the channel, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Have a great day, and I will see you all later.